Palm trees are fanned by cool ocean winds, and colorful plants grow along the rocky seaside. The red sun descends in the western horizon. This idyllic tropical scenery is found on one of the islands of Japan's capital, Tokyo. Tokyo includes many islands on which residents have long developed their own cultures and activities. Some are birthplaces of unique local beverages. They're known as the Tokyo Islands Shochu, and they offer a spirit like none other in the world. Hi, my name is Joshin, and I'm here at Hachijojima today. It's an island off of the coast of Tokyo. I'm originally from California, and I grew up between the U.S. and Japan, which is where my father's from, in Kyushu, which is a southern island. I'll be your narrator too, as I seek out the secrets of the delicious and fascinating Tokyo Islands shochu. Kyushu, as you may know, is well known for shochu, which is a Japanese single distilled spirit made using koji. The more I learned about shochu, the more curious I became. And as I started bartending in New York, then Shanghai and Tokyo, I started visiting local distilleries all over Japan. And today, we're here in Hachijojima. Tokyo Island's shochu is Honkaku shochu, distilled in the Izu Islands, located between 110 and 360 kilometers south of the Tokyo metropolis. Honkaku shochu is a single distilled Japanese spirit with varieties including sweet potato, barley, and rice shochu. Shochu is a genre of distilled spirit similar to other well-known genres like gin, rum, or vodka. Within Japan, however, it has developed a unique culture on par with that of sake. I traveled 290 kilometers south from the capital to the southernmost of the seven Izu Islands, Hachijojima. The four most prominent distillers of the Tokyo Islands are located here. Looking across the nation, most distilleries are located in Kyushu. Why was it that these shochu distillers set up shop on the Tokyo Islands? I asked one of the local distilleries to tell us the story behind the shochu. We're here today at Hachijo Kohatsu Shuzo. It's one of the four distilleries on this island of Hachijojima. They're known for making sweet potato as well as barley shochu. So we're gonna go have a look today. Hachijo Kohatsu is the island's newest distillery. They apply every single label by hand. The distillery considers it their mission to create shochu that embodies the rich nature of Hachijojima. I visited the distillery to learn more about the shochu. Could you tell us a little about the island shochu made in Hachijojima? はその土ブロック雑穀と土ブロックを作ってたみたいなんですけども、一番最初に作り始めたのはあの鹿児島のま炭素を焼いもんという方がま八丈島にそのルニンで流されてきた時に、ま八丈島にあるさつまいもを見
米が育ちにくい土地だったのでその麹を探したら麦があったとでその麹に麦を使って、えー、芋をかけた麦麹の芋っていうのが島酒のスタートになります。Shochu made in Japan typically begins with rice koji. Using barley koji is a unique regional touch. The shochu combines sweet potatoes grown on the island with Japanese barley. We're here looking at the process of making koji. This is the most important process in all of shochu making. Koji is the mold that is inoculated on a grain to help sacrify, so break down the starches into sugars, and then that can be used to start the fermentation. They showed us just how barley koji is used as a key ingredient in the production process. What process are we looking at here? えー、これをですねあの円盤、えー、型製菊に移動しているところですねだいたい20分ぐらいの作業になります I wanted to see what the koji felt like So the barley was steamed and now it has been left overnight with the koji So I'm going to take a feel of how it, how it is right now こう koji ですねどうぞ触ってみて So it's still in the very beginning of the koji making phase, but you're, you're already getting a little bit of that acidity,、um, which is a sign that the koji is starting to work. And as the koji works, it produces a lot of heat. So it, when I put my hand in there, it's actually very, very warm. So part of what this machine is going to do is to help regulate that temperature. How much koji can this make per batch? So, how much does that work out to be in shochu? Barley koji is made by allowing the koji mold to inoculate the barley. It changes the barley's starches into sugar, which is fermented and is then distilled into shochu. It's no exaggeration to call koji the origin of Japanese culinary culture. This small distillery produces 1500 liters of shochu a batch using barley koji as the base. It looks like the koji is now finished. And next, we're about to begin the shochu making process. In addition to barley koji, Hachijo Kohatsu has another unique factor to distinguish their flavor. And the secret to their signature flavor lies in this still. あのポンプでこちらの蒸留機に移動しまして、ここで蒸留という作業になります。本当の味の決め手というか、私は一番あの味の決め手なのがあのこの蒸留という工程だと思ってるんですけども、えっとその本格焼酎っていうのはその一回しか蒸留蒸留することができないので、まあその味えー、と原料の個性、味を残すというのが、あ僕たちの作っている、えー、本格焼酎というものになります。So this is a really unusual way of distilling. So you have one still that can do reduced pressure distillation and regular pressure distillation. So this, is, this gives them the ability to create shochu with a huge variety in flavor. The pot still used in distilling Honkaku shochu is similar to that of whiskey or brandy. But the shochu made at Hachijo Kohatsu uses only one single distillation. This results in a flavor that captures the base ingredient. May I have a taste? This is Nasakejima. So, the 
Reduced pressure distillation gives it this light, fruity sort of character, but it also holds on to this really hearty aspect of the barley as well. The aroma and the, the flavor are complementing each other really well, I think. I think it's got a great balance between the, the, the roastiness and the lightness in the flavor. ま、焼酎 you can see how the story of each island and each distillery are interacting with each other. And both the flavors and the labels are capturing that and, and really leaving a strong impression. I think something, you know, it really wins you over and creates this lasting memory. I'd really like for more people to get the chance to taste this. Hachijoujima once an infamous island of exile, has a culture and flavor that is unique and intriguing. Yeah, the, the drinking culture, I think, in Japan and the US where I grew up is quite different. Um, the drinking mostly in Japan happens around dining. So there's always food involved um, the whole time, even if you go out to uh, some izakaya or at home. Next, I visited a distillery with a history of over a century. Hachijo Jima Shuzo. Here we're going to see a different type of shochu that uses sweet potato as the base. We're here today at Hachijo Jima Shuzo. I'm curious to see what kind of shochu they're making here. Let's go have a look. I had the opportunity to meet Musashi Okuyama and his father Kiyomitsu, who run the distillery together. So what does the koji look like when it's ready to be used? So this is the process of making barley koji. I'm gonna have a little bite. The flavor is a little bit sour, uh, but this is the process where the starches get converted into the sugars for it to be fermented in the shochu. Water is added to the koji to make the moromi mash. It's one of the most critical steps in the fermentation process. Thank you so much for your time today. で、Thank you. What, what is the name of this shochu? Edochu. Edochu. Wow, it's quite fruity on the nose. Mm. Yeah, the flavor is very distinct. It does have a strong aroma of the sweet potatoes, but the actual flavor is quite different from any sweet potato shochu I've experienced before. It has a unique character. 
Would you say that comes from the koji? It's really not often that we get to try shochu that uses a blend of different types of sweet potatoes. But it has this pleasant complexity of different fruity notes and the different hearty aspects of the flavor that balance and play so well together. So it's, it's surprising, but it's enjoyable. After the interview, I was pleasantly surprised the Okuyama family invited me into their home to have a drink. <laughs> I was getting a true local experience, drinking shochu over a long meal with the family. So funny. All right, thank you guys. Does this use local peppers? All right, here we go. It's incredibly delicious. I'm not used to eating among so many people. <laughs> Is this also a common dish? <laughs> These go so well together. This might be the best match of all of them. The sweet potato shochu and the local dishes were a match made in heaven. I think I've taken a special liking to this kusaya pizza. <laughs> Spending time with the Okuyama family, I feel like I got a true local experience. So I just spent a couple days here on Hachijojima Island, and I consider myself a shochu lover, but I had no idea about the type of shochu that they made here. There is a really unique culture of barley koji, and a really distinct type of blending that happens, I think only on this island. I'm also really happy that I got to have dinner over at uh, the distillery, which was, gave me a taste of what drinking and eating is like on this island. So I'm excited to go check out the next island. My next destination was Nijima Island. I'm here today on Nijima Island. As you can see behind me, it's a beautiful day, beautiful view, a little windy. It's about a 40 minute flight away from Tokyo on an airplane. And on this whole island, there's just one Honkaku Shochu distillery. I'm really excited to see what they're making over there. This is Mr. Miyahara from Shin Shimazake Distillery. The shochu here is made between him and just one other worker. The aroma is really, really distinct. What kind of sweet potatoes do you use here? So you use the name Shichifuku for the product? And they're grown on the island here? Yes, 
いものなんですよね、まあ、それを使って焼酎を作りたいなということで平成15年から、えー、復活させまして、えー、あのこの七福島島を作り続けていますはい。So this is the sweet potato shochu that they make using a potato that grows on this island. And you get a really nice soft sweet aroma that is unique to the sweet potato that you don't get in the other barley shochus. But there is a really distinctive barley koji nuance that is kind of an underlying、um, flavor note. Back when his grandfather started making shochu, sweet potatoes weren't available like they were today. And during the war, it was not available at all. So the fact that they're able to make sweet potato shochu again and refining that old recipe makes me feel like it's a really unique point in history that we get to experience. The harsh environment gave birth to a spirit distinct to these islands. The Tokyo Island Shochu embodies the flavor and culture born from their history. I really love visiting shochu distilleries because you get to feel the stories up close. The tradition of shochu making originally traveled from Kyushu, but here on the islands of Tokyo, the shochu has its own unique history that you get to taste in every bottle. I just got back from Hachijojima and Nijima. And there was a couple of shochu that I met there that I thought would be great in some cocktails. So I'm gonna give that a try right now. There's a shochu that I met in Hachijojima called Edochu, right here, that's made by Hachijojima Shuzo. And I found this to be really interesting because it's a sweet potato shochu made using barley koji. And this is not something that is found in most parts of Japan. So, I like the shochu a lot, but I thought I could do something with, with it in the context of a cocktail as well. So, I'm gonna give that a try today. But first, I just wanna show you how people drink it in Japan typically.、Um, shochu, there's many ways to enjoy it, and people have their own preferences all over the country. But typically, people have it straight on the rocks or with a little bit of water or a little bit of hot water. Hot water is called oyuwari, and cold water is called mizuwari. But on the island, Mizuari is the most popular. So I'm just gonna make that and give that a try first. Just get a glass with ice. The ratio is really up to you. But、um, I'm gonna go with about 50 50. Some people like it a little bit stronger, some people a little bit lighter. The shochu itself is 25% alcohol. So depends on how you like it. So I'm gonna do half that and then say 50 50 with water. People drink this at home, at izakayas, at a restaurant. It's like the most standard way of enjoying this shochu. Give it a little stir. It really allows the aromas to open up, so I get a lot more of that sweet potato aroma.、And、this is a classic. I really like this one. So, <clears throat> I was thinking what kind of cocktail would really accentuate the flavors of this shochu, and I thought it might be interesting to make a twist on an espresso martini. Coffee goes really well with the roastiness of the barley, which is found in the koji of Edochu, and the sweet potato notes of this shochu h a s a lot of tropical aspects, and I thought that would go well with coffee, which is harvested in this kind of、uh, equatorial environment. So, I'm gonna give that a try. So, let's say, let's say about 45 ml of shochu. And remember, this is 25% alcohol. And、uh, instead of espresso, I'm gonna do、uh, cold brew coffee. Let's say 55 ml. This is a bit of a rich cold brew that I made at home. And then for the sweetness, I think we can try kokuto syrup. So, this is a type of sugar that is harvested in the southern part of Japan,、uh, in Okinawa, in that area. And it's a type of sugar that has a lot of rich flavor. So, I think that's gonna go really well with the coffee. So, let's say about 
a little bit more than 20 ml. So this should give it a good amount of body and richness in the cocktail. <clears throat> All right, let's give that a try. I think that's quite nice. So we're gonna give this a little shake. And we're gonna strain it into a coop. All right, so we got a nice little twist on an espresso martini using cold brew, edochu, and some kokuto. All right, let's give it a try. Mm, that's quite nice. You get a really nice harmony from the sweet kind of aroma of the sweet potato and the kokuto. And then the roastiness of the barley and the koji works really well with the coffee. So I think this is a kind of a new classic cocktail that we can, can probably enjoy anywhere, at home, at a bar. It's really nice. The Tokyo Island Shochu is virtually unknown to most of the world. But for lovers of history and shochu, each island distillery creates an expressive spirit filled with character. And I must say, I have become a fan. <laughs>